Let me share with you a fundamental truth about success, one that stands tall among all the qualities that lead to achievement. It's this, concentration. Now, you may possess every other attribute in the book, clear goals, well thought out plans, a carefully organized schedule, but without the ability to focus, you're simply treading water. You'll find that without the capacity to give undivided attention to one task until it's done, success will remain just beyond your reach. On the flip side, you might not have every advantage that modern society offers. Maybe you're lacking resources, connections, or some of the talents that others seem to have. But if you've cultivated the ability to concentrate on what truly matters in the moment, if you can zero in on your highest priority and stay with it until it's completed, then your success becomes almost inevitable. Now, here's something you need to understand about concentration. It's a habit, and like all habits, it takes time and practice to develop. No one starts off mastering it. It's perfectly natural for your mind to wander. In fact, even the sharpest minds can only stay focused for a short period before distractions creep in. But the difference between those who succeed and those who don't lies in one simple thing. Practice. Successful people train themselves to bring their focus back every time it drifts. They don't get discouraged when their attention strays, they just refocus and continue. And over time, it becomes easier. But here's the catch. Your mind will play tricks on you. It'll whisper excuses, tell you concentration isn't that important, that there are other more pressing things you should attend to. These are mere illusions, blandishments designed to derail you from developing this essential habit. You must push past these mental roadblocks. You see, mastering concentration is like building a muscle. The more you practice, the stronger it gets. And the stronger it gets, the more powerful you become in shaping your life. Want proof of how challenging concentration really is? Try this little exercise. Take your wristwatch, focus on the second hand, and try to watch it for a full 30 seconds. Just 30 seconds without thinking of anything else. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But here's what will happen before you know it. Your mind will drift. Thoughts will start popping up from nowhere. You'll catch yourself thinking about dinner, your to-do list, or some random memory. You'll try to bring your attention back, but staying locked in for 30 seconds will feel almost impossible. And this little exercise illustrates just how scattered most people's attention really is. Now imagine if you could train yourself to focus your mind on a single task for two solid minutes without any distractions. Think about the impact that level of concentration could have on your life. It's been said that with that kind of focus, you could achieve just about anything you set your mind to. You can start by affirming to yourself, I concentrate easily and well on new material. Say it with conviction, not just once, but multiple times, especially when you notice your mind starting to wander. Repeating this simple phrase conditions your mind to focus better, and soon you'll notice that your concentration begins to improve. I concentrate easily and well on new material. The more you reinforce this belief, the stronger it gets. It's like programming your mind to work with you, not against you. Now, some people think they can multitask, maybe listen to the radio while reading a book, believing they're absorbing both. But the reality is your mind can't give full attention to two things at once. What's actually happening is your attention is jumping back and forth between the radio and the book, meaning you're neither fully hearing the radio program nor fully grasping the contents of the book. It's like trying to take a picture with a camera lens that's out of focus. You'll end up with a blurry, unreliable image. The same thing happens with your memory. If your mind is scattered, if your senses aren't fully engaged in the learning process, your retention will be vague and incomplete. So if you want to lock new information into your long-term memory, you need to give it your undivided attention. Focus like a camera, adjusting the lens until the picture is crystal clear. Your memory sharpens when your attention is fully on the task, not divided between distractions. It's a simple, but often overlooked truth. Strong memory follows strong focus. Now let's take an example. Say I wanted to learn how to play the piano. What's the first thing I'd need? I'd need someone to teach me the fundamentals, show me the notes, the keys, the rhythms. But that's only step one. The second and most crucial step is practice. I'd have to sit down at that piano and practice day in and day out. Now, how much I practice depends on how good I want to be. If my goal is to play a simple tune for Aunt Ethel on the weekend, maybe I only need 20 minutes of practice a week. But if I want to play a concert for Julie, I'd need to practice seven hours a day, every day. It's the same with concentration. Concentration, like playing the piano, is both a science and an art. There are specific steps and techniques you need to follow. And then there's the art repetition, discipline, and practice. 
You can't master concentration overnight. It takes time, effort, and a deep understanding of how the mind works. And let me tell you, the mind is a powerful tool, but only if you learn how to use it correctly. When you're learning how to concentrate, it's essential to understand your mind. You see, the mind is naturally prone to distractions. It likes to wander, jump from thought to thought, looking for the next shiny object. But with practice, you can train it to focus. You can discipline your mind just like you train a muscle. And the more you practice concentrating on one thing at a time, the easier it becomes to maintain that focus for longer periods. Concentration is simply your ability to direct your awareness, your attention on a single point for an extended period of time without being pulled away until you decide to shift it. It's not just about focus. It's about control of your awareness. You see, most people allow outside forces to dictate where their awareness goes. Let's say we're having a conversation and your phone suddenly buzzes bing and just like that, your awareness is pulled to your phone. Another notification and your awareness shifts again. Then maybe you hear a noise outside and suddenly your awareness jumps to that. That's what happens when you don't have control. But what happens when you do have control? Well, that's what true concentration is. It's the ability to keep your awareness on one thing, whether it's a person, a project, or a task for as long as you choose to, until you make a conscious decision to move it elsewhere. This is the essence of focus. And let me tell you, that's when the magic happens when you're the one steering your awareness, not the world around you. Now, if you want to teach this concept of concentration to someone, let's say your 14 year old stepdaughter, you can't just walk up to her and say, hey, I learned this great technique today. Here's how you concentrate. That's not going to cut it. You've got to sell her on the idea first. You've got to help her understand why concentration matters. What's in it for her? Why should she care? Because until she sees the value, she's just going to think it's one more thing on the endless list of things adults tell her to do. And this is where most parents miss the mark. They watch a video or read a book, and then they come to their kids with, okay, son, you need to learn how to concentrate. I took this course and now you need to do it too. But from the kid's perspective, it's just another demand among the thousands they hear every day. You've got to make the case. Once they see the importance, once they buy in, they'll come to you saying, teach me how to concentrate. Now let's talk about concentration in its most powerful form, focus concentration. This is where you zero in. You identify your target and nothing can stand in your way. It's like drawing back the bow and keeping your eye on the bullseye until you release the arrow. Everything else fades away. There are no distractions, no side thoughts. You let nothing capture your attention unless it's directly tied to your ambition. This kind of focus is relentless. It's unshakable. When obstacles come and they will, you don't let them stop you. You find a way around them, over them, under them, or you take a completely different path. But you stay on course, you keep moving forward, eyes on the target, shutting out all the noise and the clutter. It's like clearing out the weeds so the flower can bloom. Take a major presentation, for example. You've put in the hours, the preparation, you've built the momentum, and now the moment has come. But lose your concentration, even for a second, and it could all come crashing down. Miss one beat, let your mind wander, and suddenly the audience feels it. The energy shifts. That moment you've worked so hard for can slip away if you don't stay locked in. Concentration isn't just important, it's everything in moments like that. It's the difference between success and failure. Wherever you are, be there. Whatever task is in front of you, do it with all your focus. Don't let your mind drift to the 10 other things on your to-do list. There's a time and place for everything, but the key is to handle one thing at a time. One project, one job, one goal. You've got to be fully present. Why? Because if you don't concentrate, if your mind is scattered, nothing gets done. You might feel busy, but at the end of the day, there's no real progress. You've probably heard the saying, the devil's in the details. And let me tell you, that couldn't be more true when it comes to success in life. It's the small everyday habits that often make the biggest difference. So let me give you some practical advice. If you want to take charge of your life, start by regulating your habits. Consistency is key. Try to wake up around the same time every day. Now, I'd recommend you aim for something like seven in the morning, give or take a little depending on your schedule. But here's the point, find a routine that works for you and stick to it. Why is this important? Because your body operates on rhythms, what we call circadian rhythms. When you maintain stability in your daily routines, especially in your sleep patterns, everything else starts to fall into place. Your mood stabilizes, your energy levels become more predictable. 
and you can focus better throughout the day. Human beings, much like our four-legged friends, thrive on routine. Dogs love routines, and so do we. It gives us a sense of control, a foundation to build on every single day. You need a long-term plan. You've got to have a vision for your life, something to aim for. Like Geppetto looking at that star, wishing for Pinocchio to become real. You need a vision that pulls you forward. What does success look like to you? What's the good you're striving for? And on the flip side, what are you trying to avoid? These two things, your vision of success and your fear of failure will keep you motivated and on track. Once you have that vision in place, break it down into manageable steps. Use your schedule to map out your days, your weeks, your months. Don't just throw things on the calendar for the sake of being busy, schedule what matters. Ask yourself, what can I do today that moves me closer to my long-term goals? And remember, a schedule isn't a rigid prison, it's a tool that helps you build the life you want, piece by piece. So how do you create a schedule that works? Start by blocking out time for the essentials. Sleep, meals, exercise, and family time. These are your non-negotiables, the pillars of your day. Then add in your work tasks, personal projects, and learning goals. Make sure you're clear on your priorities. What's the most important thing you need to focus on today? What can wait until tomorrow? Scheduling isn't just about doing more. It's about doing the right things. Remember, life is a balance of structure and flexibility. You need the routine to keep you grounded, but you also need room to adapt and adjust as things come up. That's where the art of scheduling comes in. You learn to adjust without losing sight of your long-term vision. Remember, success isn't about doing extraordinary things. It's about doing the ordinary things extraordinarily well. Now, once you've established a clear vision, something that gives you a sense of purpose and direction, you can start crafting your daily life around it. It's one thing to have a dream, but it's another to turn that dream into reality. That's where planning comes in. One of the best tools you can use for this is something as simple as a calendar. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Jim, I hate using schedules. I hate using calendars. And to that, I'd say, well, you're probably using them wrong. If you think of your calendar as some sort of taskmaster barking orders at you and reminding you of all the things you should be doing, then yes, it's going to feel like a burden. It becomes something that controls you instead of you controlling it. But that's not how you should use a schedule. A schedule, when used properly, is like your personal blueprint for creating the day you want. It's not there to dictate your every move or make you feel guilty for not ticking off every box. Instead, it should be a tool to help you design the life you want on your terms. Now, of course, you're going to have responsibilities. We all do. You've got tasks you need to get done to keep things running smoothly, whether it's work, family, or personal goals. But a well-designed day should also include the things that energize you that make you want to show up and live that day. You don't just fill your calendar with obligations. You fill it with things that inspire and motivate you. When you use a schedule this way, it stops being a tyrant and starts being a friend. It becomes something that helps you move forward, that helps you focus. And yes, that increases your capacity to concentrate on what truly matters. Now, when it comes to training yourself to focus, especially if you find yourself easily distracted, the key is to start small and build from there. If you want to learn to read without distractions, for example, don't aim to read for hours on end right from the get-go. That's setting yourself up for failure. Instead, set a manageable goal. Say to yourself for the next week, I'm going to read for 10 minutes a day, and I'm going to focus on minimizing distractions during that time. Once you've mastered 10 minutes, bump it up to 12, then 15. You see what's happening here? You're building the muscle of concentration gradually. The trick is to set a goal that's just a little bit beyond your current ability, not too easy, but not so hard that it feels impossible. This incremental approach works because it gives you a sense of achievement. Each small win builds your confidence. And before you know it, you're developing the habits you need to succeed. Here's the beauty of this method. It's all about progress. You don't need to transform overnight. You don't need to suddenly become a master of concentration or the most organized person in the world. You just need to get a little bit better each day. And those small improvements, when compounded over time, lead to massive results. It's like the principle of compound interest. It doesn't seem like much at first, but over time, the returns are exponential. That's why I always say the direction you're moving in is more important than where you start. Sure, your current position matters, but it's not the whole story. What truly matters is your trajectory. Are you moving forward? Are you making progress? Even if it's just a little bit each day, because if you're heading in the right direction, even small steps will eventually get you where you want to go.
This is an incredibly optimistic way of looking at things. It means that no matter where you are right now, what matters most is where you're headed. You don't have to be perfect today. You don't have to be perfect today. You don't have to have it all figured out. You just need to keep moving forward, keep improving, keep refining your habits. And that's why I always come back to this idea. Success isn't about giant leaps. It's about small, consistent steps in the right direction. You design your days, you set small, achievable goals, and you focus on progress. Little by little, you build momentum. And that momentum over time leads to extraordinary results. Now, when it comes to focus concentration, to be precise, you see, if you want to improve your ability to focus, you've got to break it down into manageable pieces. You've got to define exactly what concentration looks like for you and then break it into small, practical steps, what we call micro habits. Concentration isn't something you just stumble upon. It's a skill. And like any skill, it takes practice. Now, here's the truth. Concentration requires discipline. It demands that you set boundaries for yourself, that you respect your own need for focus. Sometimes that means putting a do not disturb sign on your door and meaning it. It means keeping distractions at bay. In today's world, it takes real discipline to ignore that phone ringing. But remember this, those distractions are just noise. They're not your priority. You've got to be in control of your time, not let every little thing pull your attention away from what matters most. Why do you think voicemail exists? Why do we have answering machines? So you don't have to answer the phone every time it rings. So you can stay focused. And trust me, your family will thank you for it too. That uninterrupted dinner hour or focused conversation makes a world of difference. And when it comes to your work, well, the less time you spend distracted, the quicker and better your work gets done. So here's the key. Concentrate on the task at hand. And more importantly, have the discipline to stay with it until it's done. If you've got a long list of things to do, figure out when your concentration is at its best. Are you a morning person? Then tackle the toughest jobs in the morning. Don't wait until later in the day when your energy is running low. Get it done when you're sharp. If you're more of a night owl, then save the hard stuff for when your brain is firing on all cylinders in the evening. You've got to learn your own rhythms, your own peak times, and use them to your advantage. When you're at work, be at work. When you're in a meeting, stay focused on that meeting. When you're with your family, be fully present with them. Don't let your mind wander. Don't let your attention drift because once it does, you'll miss important details both in work and in life. How many times have you sat through a conversation and let your thoughts wander off? Maybe you're thinking about the project you left unfinished at work or what you've got to do tomorrow. But here's the thing. When your mind wanders, you miss out on the now. You miss out on the present moment. And let me tell you, the present moment is where life happens. It's where relationships are built. It's where opportunities are born. So when you're working, focus. When you're with your loved ones, give them your full attention. Concentration isn't just about getting things done at the office. It's about being fully engaged in all areas of your life. When you discipline your mind to focus, everything gets better. Conversations become richer, tasks get completed faster, and life, well, life becomes more fulfilling. And here's another thing about discipline. The more you practice it, the easier it becomes. Concentration, like any muscle, gets stronger the more you use it. It might feel tough at first to keep your mind from wandering, but if you work on it day by day, little by little, it becomes second nature. And once concentration becomes a habit, you'll find that you don't waste nearly as much energy trying to keep your focus, you'll naturally be able to stay on track. The cornerstone of any ambitious person is concentration, focused concentration. It's about making your mind pay attention. It's about disciplining yourself to be where you are, to be fully present, fully engaged in whatever you're doing, whether that's work or play. And make no mistake, when it's time to work, you work. And when it's time to play, you play. But don't mix the two. Don't bring work into your personal life and don't let distractions creep into your workday. Concentration is about giving everything you do the attention it deserves. Your job deserves your best focus, just like your family deserves your best attention. When you're with your colleagues, engage with them. When you're with your friends, really be with them. Wherever you are, be there. Concentration is the key to getting things done, to building strong relationships, to creating a life that's meaningful. So the number one rule for any ambitious person is simple. Concentrate, focus concentration, stay disciplined. Keep your mind on the task at hand. When you learn to master your focus, there's nothing you can't accomplish. That's the foundation of success.